special guest who's actually on the Rush team. Excited to talk to him. His name is Elijah. Elijah, how you doing there, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm a little sick today, but hey, so you still got to show up to work and treat like a real job, regardless if you're sick or not. I think yesterday I might got COVID. I was traveling or something, but I still pushed through and, and did uh, or seven seven people protected um, in a day home. yesterday. So, you know, sick or not, don't make excuses. Just show up, right? Exactly. That's the beauty of remote. You can sell while you're sick, sell from home, you can sell from London. You can sell from London, sell from South America, exactly. So um, tell me real quick, a couple quick questions. Uh, Elijah is a top producer here, and uh, we're going to ask him some quick questions. We're going to go through some quick role play. Um, if you guys have some questions, you guys know the drill, ask it in the chat, and we'll go ahead and answer those for you. So if you guys are thinking some questions, ask in the chat, ask on YouTube. Once you see this video on YouTube, Elijah and me will be checking it and answer those questions for you. But I'm uh, really excited to talk to Elijah today because he is a top producer. And uh, we're going to learn how we can copy and repeat. So if you like his style, then just go back, rewatch it. Um, not once, not twice, but three or four or five, ten times. So you can come, Elijah. So real quick, how long have you been in the business for? Um, I've been in the business for maybe two years, but only as a broker here for seven months, maybe. Gotcha. Okay. And then what would you say is your record month? What's your record month of families protected? 32. It was last month. Last month. Nice. Congratulations. 30 is pretty good. So uh, how much were you investing in your client's uh, request for help in that month per week? Um, I think I did about per week, you said? Yeah, per week. I did about 1200 to 1500 per week. Okay, so just spending some more money on some leads, get in front of more people, bigger results. So um, what would you say is the biggest mistake that you made you know, early on when you were starting off? One of the biggest mistakes I made is, is spending too much time with non-buyers. For me, I really like to just find the prospects that are actively seeking the life insurance and actively looking for my help. If you're not looking for you know, help for me, like get out of my way. I'm going to go on to the next buyer, but that's, that's one mistake that I was making in the beginning is wasting too much time. Gotcha. How, how can you tell if someone's like a buyer, or not a buyer, what are some like good tells that you, that you kind of picked up on, or is that just naturally come through time? I think if they're, if they're giving you a really hard time, like if they're giving you four five, six, seven different objections before you even get to explaining anything, there's a good chance that they're probably not going to buy or they're, they're going to give you a really hard time. So I handle some objections up front. Like I give it a couple of shots, but if they're really giving me a tough time, I'm, I'm not going to force anybody through the process. Gotcha. Now, if you were to break this down in its simplest form, because maybe you can agree to this or not, but you know, I feel like when people come to this business, sometimes we can overcomplicate it in our head. If you could break this down in its simplest form, what are the three, you know, three main key things that people need to do to be successful at this? Definitely, you guys hear it all the time. It's the most common thing that's said, but it's lead spend. And it's just something that you continuously work on as and I've understood the concept more as I kind of grew inside of this career. But lead spend is, is the biggest one. Second thing is making sure that you're getting your closed questions in. I actually don't track dials like most producers. I track closed questions. I see how many presentations I'm doing in a day. Key metric, I try to enforce three. So I do three presentations every single day. It's 15 a week. It's guaranteed to help you make at least two grand a week or, you know, protect two families a week. Um, and then the last thing is working with other people. I think this is a really lonely business. I think... FFL is really good where they have all of these live Zoom rooms. You know, you can come and dial in live with Ryan. You can come dial in live with Domination Dials, uh, FFL sales team. Like all of that synergy is going to really help you close deals. And to just have those people work with you, the camaraderie is, is what's excelled me to, you know, what, what I've hit last month, which is 30. Nice. What do you think is the, the hardest part of doing it over the phone versus face-to-face? definitely the credibility factor. I mean, you can be as on point with your script. You can be, you know, a hundred percent dialed in on product knowledge and, and everything, but there are just some people that won't give you their banking over the phone. And it's just something that you'll deal with as a telesales producer. Um, and then the second thing I would say is probably callbacks or appointments. 
the, the show ratio for me at least in telesales has been low. So I've been doing one call closers primarily. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and what would you say to someone out there that's maybe brand new, that's kind of struggling, you know, you probably went through the same thing, um, that's kind of feeling about throwing in the towel. What would you say to someone like that? What's some advice you give them? I would say that you should trust in the system that's laid out. If they're having trouble, they're probably not following the system to the T. And what I mean by that is the most successful people in the business have written and revised the scripts that are provided out there publicly, right? On YouTube, you can find scripts. On FFL Rush, you can find scripts, right? Other producers' websites, you can find scripts. You can find lead sources that are recommended from FFL that other top producers are using. If people are struggling, they're probably not following the systems to the T and they're trying to reinvent the wheel as somebody that has no experience in the business. So I would say, get back in, right? Follow the system to the T. And if you're still having trouble, get with your manager and see how they can help correct you. Gotcha. Yep. Reach out for help and whatever your mentors are recommending you do, just do it. Right. Right. Yeah. The funny thing is about this business and I scratch my head about it sometimes, but you know, it's, it's like, we only get paid as a mentor if you're successful. So it's kind of funny how sometimes we'll tell you things to do to be successful but yet sometimes as agents will do the exact opposite and they wonder why we don't make money it's like why would we guide you down a path that's not going to make both of us successful right doesn't make any sense so yeah just just copy and repeat and do with the things your mentor advises you to do and then all of a sudden if anything happens you're making the money you want to make right cool well take me through it man what kind of leads are you running right now um you know final expense are you doing uh life insurance leads uh, mortgage protection? I focus in on final expense. Um, final expense. That's just what I'm comfortable with. That's kind of what I started on and I've kind of been working and developing over time. Okay. Um, in terms of lead sources, we've yeah. been trying out a few different leads, trying out uh, Lead Rilla, Bang Bang leads. They're okay. Um, Happy Agent was really good, high quality exclusives. Okay. All right, nice. So, so we got some final expense. Take, take me through it. So we'll we'll do a 65-year-old. I'll be like a male. Um, and kind of give me an example of how like a one call close, you know, goes. Okay. So uh ring ring hello. Hey Ryan. Yeah, this is Ryan. Hey Ryan, this is Elijah, the underwriter assigned to your case. Hey Ryan, I'm just getting back to you in regards to the final expense life insurance information you requested for Arizona residents. Hey, Ryan, just to confirm, you put your date of birth down here as one, two, three. Is that correct? That's that's correct. Yeah. Gotcha. It also looks like you put down your address here as one, two, three Main Street. Is that correct as well? That's correct. Yeah. Gotcha. So again, Ryan, I was just calling to let you know that we did process this request for you. I'm going to be the one that's going to help you take care of this today. Um, it only takes about 10 minutes. We're doing everything over the phone now. So can you go ahead and grab a pen and paper? That way we can get this out of the way. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. All right. So pretty basic opening. Um, how, how often would you say that you get hung up on, on that opening? Honestly, it depends on the leads that I'm working because sometimes you have age, sometimes you have exclusives. So okay. if I'm working age leads, maybe I'm getting pretty high, like maybe seven out of 10. Seven out of 10 hang up. So I'm just, I want to point that out because you know, when you're filing a cheaper lead, you know, even Elijah that produces well, he gets no's. So just know that no's are part of it. It's just he consistently dials and he's okay with the no's and knows is part of it. And then eventually finds some yeses. So three out of 10, he's able to actually get through that part to where they're not hanging up. Right. Right. And then the three that are there, I mean, you close one out of those three. You know, you're, you go. you're I mean, we make a very, so. yeah, exactly. Make a very good return every time we help protect a family. So it's just, it's. I want to point out that everyone gets the nose, same with Elijah, same with me, same with everybody out there. So you're not special or unique just because you got four no's in a day and you're like, ah, I'm terrible about this, I'm quitting. It's like, no, you're supposed to get no's. You get 20 no's, 30 no's in a day. In fact, actually, the more no's you get, the closer you are to getting some yeses. So um, take me through that again one more time. This time I'll throw out a couple uh, rebuttals here. And we'll kind of see how we respond because we, we're all going to get these. Okay. All right. Ring, ring, hello. Hey, Ryan. 
Yeah, this is Ryan. Hey, Ryan. This is Elijah, the underwriter assigned to your case. I'm just getting back to you in regards to the information you requested online for the final expense life insurance programs. I'm, oh, I'm not interested in that. Oh, what do you mean? Not interested in what? Uh, wh whatever you're trying to sell me. Gotcha. Yeah, so I'm not trying to sell you anything. You must be confused. I'm actually getting back to you on the information you requested for the final expense life insurance programs. Those are those plans that leave some tax-free money behind for your family. Um, hey, Ryan, it looks like you put down your date of birth here as X. Is that correct? That's correct. Gotcha. And your address says 123 Main Street. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. How much does this cost, Elijah? Yeah. So, Ryan, that's exactly why I'm calling. My job is to get all of that information out to you. I'm actually a broker with the state. So I do want to let you know, Ryan, we're actually taking care of everything over the phone now. It's going to take about 10 minutes and I'll get that info right over to you. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper. We can get this out of the way. Let me know when you're ready. I'll grab that pen and paper. Look at that reaction. Smooth, right on top of it. Now, you know, break this down real quick. Um, you know, were you good at responding to rebuttals like that right away? Or did that just come through constantly getting no's and then eventually learning how to react faster and faster to them? Yeah, no way. Uh, in the beginning, I was so, I was terrible at it. I mean, I think everybody is in the beginning because like you just get all flustered up when the client starts telling you things that you don't see on your script, you get confused. But as you kind of go through it, right? That's why I recommend working age leads when you're first starting out you just get those repetitions in like you you work a pack of age leads you'll get a bunch of those objections so you really can get way more repetitions in and you can learn so much quicker it just increases your learning curve by 10 x yep i love that and, and your reaction was so like non-reactive like yeah i get it i'm gonna do my job you know i'm in control here grab the pen and paper we're gonna take care of this so that was excellent great job elijah all right so i got my pen and paper here i'm ready Gotcha. So Ryan, first things first, I need you to write down my information. So again, my name's Elijah. That's spelled blah, blah, blah. Last name is Konoho, spelled blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to leave you with my state producer number as well. That one's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, Ryan, with that producer number, you can actually look me up on the Department of Insurance for the state of Arizona. Just shows I'm a licensed professional. Okay. Got it. Gotcha. Now, Ryan, I just wanted to ask, were you requesting this information for just yourself or is this for a spouse as well? Um, I was requesting it for um, just myself today. Okay, gotcha. And what was your goal as far as getting something in place, Ryan? Was this to cover like funeral costs, leaving a legacy behind to the kids or grandchildren? What's, what's going on? Um, you know, just kind of wanted to look into it, see what the cost would be, um, you know, see if I could afford it. Gotcha. Okay, Ryan. And then when you say afford it, right, life insurance can be used to cover a lot of different things. It can be for funeral costs, it can be for leaving a legacy behind two or three kids, right? What specifically are you trying to do so we can help get a policy that's custom for your needs? Um, yeah, just kind of cover some funeral expenses. And then, uh, you know, if, 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 if I can afford it, maybe some, some extra for the grandkids. And I got to pause real quick because that was excellent. You know, he's trying to find the why he didn't, you know, a lot of times people are going to be generic and he just kept going, digging in and going, I got to find the why I got to find the why that was a great job. All right. Continue for it. Okay. Gotcha. So funeral expenses, Ryan, uh, I know you're pretty young right now, but you're probably through cremation or burial. Um, probably cremation. That's cheaper, right? You still there? Sorry, my connection kind of lagged uh, out. You're, you're good. So I said uh, a cremation, that's cheaper, correct? Yeah, cremation is, is on the cheaper end because there's not as much expenses involved. You don't got to worry about a casket or a plot. And those are most of the times the most expensive part of the process. But okay. So Ryan, looking to go for a cremation then? Yeah. Gotcha. Were you planning to do any sort of services at the mortuary? You're planning to have your own little end of life celebration with family um i don't care i mean i'm i'm gonna be dead right right yeah that's the thing a lot of the times it is up to the family's discretion do you have kids ryan uh no okay gotcha and then do you have a spouse um i do have a spouse yeah okay gotcha so no. yeah most of the time right when people have really close family they always do some sort of service for them, right? A lot of people say, oh, just bury me in the backyard or, oh, just toss me in, in a ditch. But 
most of the time the family is going to have some sort of services through the mortuary. So we'll put down a service. We'll take a look into that for you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And you also said you wanted to leave some money behind to your grandkids. My, my grandkids. Yep. Gotcha. No kids, but, but grandkids. Grandkids. Yeah. Lots of grandkids. I see. Okay. No worries. How many grandkids did you have? Um, grandkids, probably like uh, four. <laughs> before so okay. i got a little distracted it's it's funny my uh my son right now he's in school and he knows i'm working and he doesn't have his phone on him because he's grounded but he's using someone else's phone but he's heard me talk so much about if you want someone to answer call multiple times then in the middle of this meeting i keep getting this call from the same number he calls me like eight times <laughs> i, I checked it you know, it's like gavin he's like i don't care if you're working i don't care if you're the point i don't care if you're a live call I'm going to keep calling you over and over again until you answer. <laughs> so that's that capacity from you. Yeah. It just goes to show you guys, you want people to answer, you call them multiple times, you're going to get their attention, <laughs> but no, I got a, yeah, I got three grandkids. Okay. Got three grandkids and you're looking to possibly leave a little bit of money behind for them. Um, I mean, if I can afford it, like I said, it just kind of depends on the cost. Okay. Gotcha. So I just want to make sure we're on the same page and I was hearing you correctly. Main concern is to make sure that your cremation is taken care of, probably going to have some sort of small service since you have a lot of family in the state. Um, and then if it's affordable, you want to leave some money behind to the grandkids as well. Is that correct? That's right. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Now, Ryan, have you ever had to plan a funeral in the past? Um, no, I haven't actually. Okay. So the only reason why I do ask is because it is a pretty serious problem, Ryan. A lot of the times people just aren't aware of the costs associated with the funeral. Right. On average, in the state of Arizona, Ryan, the average funeral cost for a cremation is between about three to $8,000. Okay. I just want to make sure you understand that. That would be the responsibility for your wife to take care of all of those expenses. Now, is she in a place financially where she can take care of that right now? Um, no, she's not actually. Mm -hmm. That'd be a little tough on her for sure. Yeah, I see. Okay. So we'll make sure we get that taken care of for you here today. Okay, Ryan? Okay. All right. Now, do you have anything prearranged with the mortuaries or the funeral homes? Uh, no, I haven't even thought about that. Are you supposed to get a hold of them and let them know? Or? There's a couple of different ways you can do it. We do it with final expense policies. I think it's a little bit better of a way, but can do it through them as well. It's up to you. Well, what's the, what's the major difference? Well, when it comes to taking care of it with a funeral home, actually, let me back up. There's three ways to take care of a funeral. Okay, Ryan? The first way is that the family pays out of pocket after something happens. That's the worst way. It's the way that everybody tries to avoid. That's why you're requesting information today. Second way is that you can actually go directly to the mortuary and prepay it, right? So what you would do is you would say, hey, I want this cremation, I want this service, and then you would pay them up front, whatever it costs to have, so that way your family doesn't pay it on the back end. The only thing with going directly to the mortuary, Ryan, is if something happens to you, you know, let's say next month or even in a year, if that prepaid plan isn't paid off, then your family still has to pay the difference. It doesn't give you immediate coverage. Now, the way that we take care of it is actually using final expense life insurance policies. And the way that this works is it's an affordable plan, you pay on it monthly. And as long as you're healthy, which we'll take a look into here in a second, even if you pass away after you make one payment, they're still gonna pay off the entire cremation for you and possibly leave some money behind to your grandchildren, even though you only put one payment in, right? So it gives you immediate coverage. Does that make sense? Doesn't make sense, yeah, okay. Gotcha, so yeah, that's the route that we go is final expense life insurance policies. Okay. But you have any life insurance in place right now? um no i don't have anything right now okay no worries and then ryan were you working full-time part-time or retired uh right now i'm retired retired okay where you want ssi uh no okay no worries so ryan the way this works is very simple so i'm a licensed broker and my job is to pull up all of the options for you in the state of arizona now everything is based off of your age and health so i'm gonna ask you a few medical questions depending on how you answer those It'd give me a good idea on what types of coverage you could be approved for. Is that fair? That sounds fair. Okay. So Ryan, once we pull up some carriers for you, we're going to look to see which company is offering you the best chances of approval. And at that point, we can submit an application to see if you can actually get that coverage. 
Now, if you find something within your budget that you want to see if you can qualify for, the insurance companies are going to require three pieces of information on your application. So Ryan, they're going to need your driver's license. That's how they check your criminal background. They're going to need your social security number. That's how they check your medical and prescription records. And they also ask for the bank account information. Because if you do get approved for a policy, that's how you'd be paying for it. Just like car insurance. You have all three pieces of information, right? Um, yeah, I have all three of those. Okay, gotcha. So we'll just jump into some medical questions now. Um, so Ryan, right now, do you smoke cigarettes? Um, yes. Okay, gotcha. And then are you taking any sort of prescription medications right now? Um, yes. Okay, what are you taking it for? Uh, Takes it for blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol. Okay. And asthma. And asthma, gotcha. So for the diabetes, have you ever had diabetic complications, any neuropathy, insulin shock? Um, no, no complications, no. Gotcha. And were you on insulin? Yes. Okay. When were you diagnosed with that? Uh, when I was uh, uh, 61. Gotcha. Okay. And then anything else in the medical history that you haven't mentioned to me? Any cancers, any severe medical conditions in your lifetime? Um, yeah, I did have cancer. Okay, when was that? Uh, it was prostate cancer four years ago. Four years ago, gotcha. Okay, um, anything else? I did have a heart attack back when I was 52. Okay, gotcha. Was that just one heart attack or did you have multiple throughout your lifetime? Uh, just one. Okay. Has the heart attack led to any other problems? Um, I know sometimes it can lead to other medical conditions. Um, no, I was on a blood thinner for a couple of years, but now just had the blood pressure and the oh. baby aspirin. Gotcha. Perfect. Anything else in the medical history? That's it. Okay. Perfect. How tall are you, Ryan? I am six foot one. Six foot one. And then how much do you weigh, Ryan? 200. 200. Gotcha. Okay, so give me one second here, Ryan. I'm going to go ahead and input your medical information into our system here. It's going to scan through all of our carriers in the state of Arizona, figure out which one's going to be giving you the best chances of approval and the best rate, okay? Okay, sounds fair. Okay, so it looks like it's scanning. Awesome. So Ryan, based on your medical information, the carrier that's coming back for you with the best rate is going to be one of our A-plus rated carriers, Aetna. You ever heard of Aetna before? Uh, Yeah. Yes. The tie with CVS, right? Exactly. Super huge company, been in business forever. They're the ones that are coming back for you with the best rate. Um, so Ryan, do you still have your pen and paper handy? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to have you write down something on your paper for me. I want you to write down whole life coverage. Okay. Are you familiar with the difference between whole life coverage and term life coverage? Uh, no, what's the difference? Okay. So when it comes to whole life, just like in the name, the coverage lasts your whole life. So there's no expiration date on it. What that means is that it's guaranteed to pay out for your family. Unlike term life coverage, where it usually lasts for a certain amount of time, sometimes 10, 15, 20 years, once it reaches the end of that time period, that coverage expires, Ryan, you're not gonna get any of your money back, right? So that's why we're going down the whole life route for you today as well. Um, the other thing about whole life as well is that once you lock it in, nobody can ever take your rate away from you. Doesn't matter if you get cancer in the future, doesn't matter if you pass away when you're 120. If you can qualify today and lock in your rate, it's never going to be taken away from you. Unlike term coverage, where that rate is changing at the end of every single term. Does that make sense? Makes sense, yeah. And then the last thing about whole life coverage is it just has some cash value in there. So Ryan, let's just say, you know, two years from now, there's some sort of financial emergency. What you'd be able to do, Ryan, is pull from the cash value account and your whole life policy and use it to cover those emergency expenses. So it's just a living benefit that allows you to access your life insurance policy without dying. Does that make sense? It does make sense, okay. Perfect, so yeah, it's the main difference between whole life and term. Um, now, Ryan, I'm gonna have you write down Aetna below whole life, because that's the company you're gonna be with. Yeah. Then I want you to write down 30,000, 25,000, and 20,000. Okay. Perfect. Now, option one, that's gonna be the 30,000. I just want to make sure we're on the same page again. Like you were saying, main concern is just to make sure that that cremation expenses is taken care of. And if possible, 
potentially leaving some money behind to the three grandkids if it's affordable. Is that right? That's right. Gotcha. Okay. So Ryan, option one, that's going to be that 30,000 I had you write down in your paper. This one is going to take care of all of your cremation expenses, right? On top of that, it's going to leave behind additional money. Should leave behind, you know, maybe about five to 10,000, or sorry, actually 10 to 15,000 behind to the three grandchildren. That way they can put it into their savings, invest it into their college fund, whatever they need to use it for. And it's going to be there for them after the funeral expenses are covered. And for the 30,000, Etna's quoting you 100. Okay. Now the 25,000, that's going to be your option too. This one is still going to take care of your funeral expenses and it's still going to leave some money behind. It's just going to be a little bit less, probably around the range of five to 10,000, depending on how big your services are. And then Aetna for this one, they're quoting you 80 bucks a month. Okay. And then the last option, Ryan, that's going to be the $20,000. This is the basic plan, Ryan. That option is just going to make sure that no matter what happens to you, your family isn't going to have to be burdened or pay out of pocket for any of your cremation expenses. It's just going to make sure that that's taken care of, but it's not going to leave money behind to the grandkids. Does that make sense? Makes sense, yeah. So the 20000 Etna's quoting you $60. Okay. Now, like I said before, Ryan, fortunately, I don't make the final decision. Etna is the one that does that. So we'd still have to submit your application to see if you can qualify for this or not. But Ryan, if you are able to qualify, which one did you want to leave your grandchildren with? The thirty thousand dollars, the twenty five thousand dollars, or the twenty thousand um, dollars. Well, can I take some time to think about it and call you back? Hey, Ryan. The cool thing about what Aetna actually does is they have something called a thirty day free look period. Have you ever heard of that before? Uh, no. Okay. So the way that the thirty day free look period works, Ryan, is I know it's a pretty big decision to choose which plan you want to go with, but what I always recommend to people that kind of gotta take a look over it for is that they go with the middle plan, so the 25000 because it's a little bit more affordable, but it's still going to do both of the things that you want it to do, like leave some money behind to the grandkids and also take care of the funeral expenses. So we go with the middle plan, and the 30-day free look period, the way that that works is what if you qualify, they're actually going to give you 30 days to make any sort of adjustments to your policy, whether you want to go up to the 30000 or down to the 20000 and you can make those adjustments within 30 days of qualifying. So. Did you want to go with the 25,000 or stick with something a little bit more basic, the 20,000 for now? Um, let's probably start with the 20,000. The 20,000? Gotcha. No worries, Ryan. So I'll get that application pulled up for you now. It's going to take about 10 minutes. How's your day going so far? Good. Okay. All right. Well, that was it. I love it, guys. Hey, guys, drop some fire emojis in the chat, in the comments. That was great job, Elijah. Great job. Um, so what do you think is the, the major things that are some of the the, the problems or the rebuttals or the, the, the headaches or the hiccups that you kind of run into when you're going through your presentation? Um, like towards the, like when I'm already presenting or in the beginning? Yeah, when you're already presenting. Obviously we get through it, we're giving some options, we're presenting. What are some of the major hurdles that you've had to learn to overcome and what are some good tips you can throw out to some other agents that run into the same stuff? Right. I used to get a lot on the social, like the social banking, like, hey, why, why are you going to need my social? I used to get that a lot. I haven't gotten it at all, really, in the last, like, month. And I just started being way more confident and, like, way more assertive. Like, I used to kind of beat around the bush a little bit. I used to be like, does that make sense? Or, like, uh, is that going to be a problem? Like, I just asked, like, you have all three pieces of information, correct? Like, when you're more direct, I found that people aren't as, you know, weird about it because I'm not making it weird. So yeah, as you kind of learned if you were making something a bigger deal than it needed to be, then they made it a bigger deal than it needed to be. Right. You kind of try to tiptoe around it and it brings attention into it because you're tiptoeing around it instead of just being direct. Yeah. Gotcha. And then what, what would you say? I mean, I want you guys to ask some questions here because that's what Elijah's here for, for all of us to kind of learn from him. But, you know, what would you say is the, the best way to kind of build up that confidence to kind of learn how to be more direct if someone's new? In the beginning, you have, I faked it. Like in the beginning, I had no confidence, but I just told myself like, hey, like you're going to be an actor. I got this from you actually. <laughs> yes, Sean Mike um, and training from the past, but you're like an actor. Yeah, I'm the top sales guy. Nobody ever tells me no on the phone. 
I'm confused that you don't know what's going on. I'm confused that you don't want life insurance. Like just, you're an actor. Yep. Be confused. I love it. Be confused. And just do repetitions, right? I mean, I think the more action you take, naturally you learn, right? I mean, everyone's supposed to suck at first. Okay. You're not special if you suck. We're all, we all sucked. I sucked. Elijah sucked. All the top producers sucked. It's just, they kept, kept pushing through, kept doing more and more action and, and less, they less sucked less, sucked less, got normal, better, better, better. And still to this day, I mean, probably every single week that you go out there and do this, you're picking up new things and getting better and better and better as you go. Right. Yep. Yep. And that's where the confidence comes through is by taking action guys. So, you know, be proud of yourselves for making dials every day. Be proud of yourselves for, you know, getting back on the horse every time you get a no, right. And keep riding to that next, the next finishing line and your confidence will actually grow by doing. So I think that's awesome. Um, as far as uh, running other types of leads, like, you know, from like life insurance, you know, sometimes when you're down some instant leads, for example, um, and you run into something that's maybe not a final expense and a life insurance appointment, how do you handle that a little bit different from like the final expense one you just did? Um, it's the same structure. So my script is always the same, whether I'm doing a mortgage protection, life insurance, or a final expense, I follow the same structure. Um, one thing that I will say though, is final expense is a little bit more direct. Like, you know, exactly what to aim for. Like, Hey, are you doing cremation burial kind of helps paint the picture so vivid that they, they see it and they would, it would be a no brainer for them to say no. That's the way that I try to find the one It's like just a super vivid picture. So I do the same thing with life insurance. I always try to delegate the coverage to something. Like, hey, like, what is this for? Is this for income? Oh, gotcha. Okay. So what it sounds like you're saying is Maria is staying at home because you guys just had a baby. And if something happens to you, you want to make sure she has three years worth of salary so she can continue to pay the bills, keep a roof over her head, feed herself and the baby. Is that right? So it's very direct. It's not, oh, I want to get $250,000 of coverage. It's oh, three years replacement of your salary, right? I try to delegate it for something. <clears throat> so you're doing a lot of reconfirming and going, hey, so correct me if I'm wrong, but sounds like you're saying is you want it for this, this, and this. Is that correct? Kind of doing the right. reconfirms. That's awesome. The reconfirms are great ways, great tools to use instead of the direct statement. So I love that. Um, and then even if they, they picked a cremation, I thought it was interesting that you're like, hey, you know, a cremation costs three to eight grand, but yet you're still, you're producing the minimum one at 20K. And so what you probably noticed is, having confidence to, Hey, if I pitch higher amounts, I'm going to get some higher premiums um, and just act like that standard. Right. Right. Sometimes I do like the inflation thing. Cause if they're younger, like I'll usually have my minimum option be like 15. It's like, okay. Hey, I'm sure that like if inflation doesn't matter what happens, like your family will always be protected, not just today, but one year from now, if need be. it's kind of the way that I went about it, but I wasn't writing all of it down. So I didn't have my options and, <laughs> gotcha yeah because i mean you do want to bring that up right it's like hey you know inflation used to be doubles every 20 years but you know right now we're going like what eight percent or something a year <laughs> so it's like yeah, crazy you know, every, every 12 years it's like all right so your thirty thousand is going to be worth fifteen thousand twelve 12 years down the road we need to get extra right now unless you're planning on dying right away tomorrow do you know for sure you're dying tomorrow because <laughs> what right. if you live to 85 this isn't going to be worth as much right so yeah, I thought that was interesting to, to make sure you bring up too. Cool, man. Um, Abram, go ahead. Is, uh, with that question, I added it in the script. Uh, have you ever had to plan a funeral before? It's either gonna it's either gonna bring up a positive memory from some if they had to, right? If they had to in the past, it's either gonna bring up a very positive memory. It's gonna bring up a really negative memory. That's why I added into the script to give myself leverage. So if I asked you like, hey, have you ever had to plan a funeral before? Say yes. Okay. Did you have to plan that for a family member? Was that for mom or whatever it may be? And then I asked the question, had, had, did mom have everything taken care of for you guys? Or did you guys have to pay out of pocket for all of that? And if they say we had it taken care of, like, oh, it's amazing. Like mom did really good setting you guys up so you guys wouldn't have to go through any financial burdens. We did have to pay out of pocket almost 70% of the time that's a sale because they already went through it. To, I'm so sorry you guys had to go through that. And then in my reconfirming, right, when I go back towards the end of finding the why, hey, Ryan, I just want to make sure we're on the same page here. You've kind of already had to go through the experience planning the funeral for mom. You understand how expensive it can be because you guys already paid out of pocket for it. 
you want to make sure that when something happens to you, your kids don't go through that same exact situation. Is that correct? So that, there's a lot of power in that question. I like it. I like that question too. It's really good. And actually brings up to a question from Abraham. He asks, what are some other find the need questions you use besides some good, powerful questions like that? Do you have any additional ones you could use? Yeah. Like who's going to be responsible for taking care of funeral expenses or if you're doing life insurance, right? You're going to say, who's going to be responsible for taking care of the bills? The, the main things that I like to find and find in the need is people. So I want to know who's involved. I want to know what expenses are involved exactly, which is why I ask cremation or burial, or if I'm um, doing life insurance, like I find out, okay, is this to replace salary? Is this to replace mortgage protection? Is this to pay your children's college tuition because you're paying for their college? Like, what is it exactly? Um, and those are the two main things, but they're, they're all different. Yeah. And again, it's just, it's just being curious, right? I mean, I've walked into houses for mortgage protection and they had a reverse mortgage. So it's like, you know, there, there's no point in protecting the house at that point, but you start digging in and you're like, all right, so, you know, what, what would happen if uh, your husband died yesterday, had a heart attack and he wasn't here today, you know, how much income are you losing? Right. And what kind of bills do you have? You know, what do you guys pay for your credit cards? How much is your food? And I just started adding up all their, all their expenses. And I was like, great. So we're basically going to get this plan is going to replace all this income loss for a year to get back on your feet. Right. So I'm adding up all their bills, all their food expense and covering all those expenses for a year. I just got creative with it. Right. Um, another person said he didn't care what happened when he passed away, but um, um, wanted to have a boat uh, when he would go sailing if his wife died. I said, how are you going to pay for that boat? So we got, we got some money to pay for the boat, right? So you just got to, you got to be digging deep and be curious and paint the picture that if they died yesterday, what's the situation look like today? And how can some tax-free money solve some of those problems that are going to occur? Because no matter what happens when someone dies, there's a loss of income, there is going to be problems that do occur, right? So just be curious, right? Like, like, you, like you said before, be the actor. Everyone buys this. Scrunch your eyes a little bit instead of like reacting like, oh, well, 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 that's the sales guy. Said pause, scrunch your eyes. Um, everyone buys this. Uh, can you tell me what why what you're not getting about this? Because it's tax-free money to protect the people you love most, right? So just be curious and find find the need. Um, and you can look that up too. Good need questions, lots of stuff on online, Google it, do lots of research. Um, the people that are killing it are always studying. You know, they're always trying to learn more. You know, if you talk to any of the top producers that are, you know, producing, uh, protecting at least 30 families every single month, the one thing they have in common is they're always studying. Whether it's reading a good book or watching more YouTube videos or learning more about annuities, they're constantly dripping and getting more education to get better. And that's a commonality you're gonna find through all top producers. So um, you can do a lot of Google searches too on finding good need questions. A lot, of, a lot of good stuff out there for sure. I love it. But yeah, my favorite one is just, you died yesterday. You know, what's the situation look like today? You know, and what's your plan now? What do you want to happen, right? Um, Abraham asks, what tools do you use? What do you mean by that, Abraham? I use the underwriting cheat sheet. That is a lifesaver. Okay. Big script. Using the cheat sheets, the scripts. Um, do you use like a, do you use like a, a call tools or or a phone burner? I don't. So Not just, right now. Just manual dialing through the phone. Uh, what what's like your uh, ring structure to get a hold of people? You dialing three rings in a row, four rings in a row, five rings in a row. Do you repeat like twenty leads or what's kind of like your dial structure? For aged, I do too. For like brand new, like nectars or like lead rillas where they like kind of just pop in, like as as generated, I'll do one. Okay, just one ring, huh? Yeah, but then I go through them like a bunch of different times. Okay, yeah, so I mean, all of them in like three hours. Okay, so just yeah, hitting them up multiple times throughout the day, making sure they keep seeing the same number pop up. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're not getting a hold of people, guys, I would recommend dial five times in a row. I mean, that's what my son just did on today's call. He called me like literally seven times in a row. I'm like, what the heck, dude? 
I like checking the text messages and stuff. So it does work. You're going to get people's attention. Don't be afraid to call someone that literally asked you to call them. It makes no sense at all to be scared of that, right? Um, well, great job, man. Um, any final words for people out there that, you know, maybe are just getting started and trying to push through any good advice or some final words you'd like to leave for people? Sure. The last thing that I would say, and one of the biggest things that's going to help you out as a new agent is really having conviction and belief in what you do. I think the people that, that don't have it in their heart to really want to help people and don't believe in the product at the end of the day are never going to be as successful as the people who really believe in full, full heartedly with hundred percent conviction that what we're doing is helping families and putting them in a better position when that day does come. If you ever need proof of that, go on GoFundMe. I don't know if you guys have ever been on there, but just go on GoFundMe and search up funeral and, and look at how many things pop up. And those are all the top candidates, like the people that have like one in their ranking system. So they're all popped up at the top. You see that most of them are paid, but there's thousands of them, thousands of them. And most of them go unpaid. So if you ever need uh, to increase your conviction, go to GoFundMe and you'll see how bad of a problem it is. I love that, man. And, and it's so true. Um, you know, it's, it definitely, and you had, you probably had some people pass away, but I'll, I'll definitely remember the first couple of times it happened where you get that call and, you know, you just talked to a client like six months ago and they passed away. That's when it makes it real. You're like, dang, what I do for a living is, is, is real. And I, if they didn't have this protection in place, they would have lost their house. They would have, you know, been going, doing GoFundMes, you know, it would have been in a pretty terrible situation. So uh, what we do is important. I, I love that you got to get, get get behind what you believe in and uh, know that we sell a really amazing product. So that's excellent. Hey, if Elijah, if people wanted to work with you, how do they get in touch with you? What's your phone number? Uh, it's going to be 808-722-2878. All right, one more time in case people didn't catch it. Yeah, no worries. It's 808-722-2878. Hey, man, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for taking time out of your day today to teach us. Um, if you need anything at all, man, you just give me a call. Pleasure being busy with you, bro. And uh, keep rocking it today, okay? Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, Ryan. See you guys.